What's up to the 21.9 thousand grimdark enjoyers of my channel, and welcome back to another thematic list build. With the 10th edition Chaos Space Marines Codex finally unleashed, it's about time the Traitor Legions get their due. And while at the time of writing this script I don't have full access to the points, I think I've seen enough to realize what I have in mind. This one is for a very stubborn Chaos Space Marine Legion, a legion known for their cold, logical siegecraft. It's a thematic list build for the Iron Warriors. Naturally, for the Sons of Perdurabo, we're looking at using the Fellhammer Siege Host. The Vashtor Detachment might be more your bag if you prefer your vehicles demonic, but I quite like the traditional angle for the Iron Warriors, as their conservative nature is nicely represented by sticking to the old ways. The detachment rule, Iron Fortitude, grants a conditional minus one to wound against incoming enemy attacks, but only if that attack's strength is greater than the target's toughness. Simply, unless they got pluses of their own, you'll never be wounded on twos, and things that wound you on threes will wound on fours. I rate this quite highly, as it's mucking with every instance of the enemy attack sequence. And, it's mucking with the two-factor test between strength and toughness, which is more often a greater detriment than messing with the one-factor skill tests. The Fellhammer Siege Host enhancements are fine. Warp Tracer, while fluffy, seems to have some practical difficulties, as most characters don't have weapons with particularly long ranges. Maybe it should've just let you pick a visible enemy unit and give the perk to units near the bearer, but I digress. While the enhancement selection here doesn't spark the most joy, they still provide a tangible benefit, and I suspect they'll be used when you want to fill up some points. The stratagems, however, are pretty solid. Give a unit a 5 up feel no pain against shooting, or the ability to worsen an enemy charge roll by 2. Yes, please. Now, let's head over to the list breakdown. Any army hoping to be even a little bit classic should have a core of battle line, which for this list takes the form of four Chaos Space Marine squads. Each are five men strong, and configured so that two models have bolt pistols with chainswords, and two models have heavy melee weapons, one of which is the unit champion. The fifth member of each squad is given a missile launcher. Since the aim with these four units are to serve as pseudo tack squads, I wanted to include a heavy ranged weapon. And the missile launcher does have versatility, Plus, there's something about controlled demolitions that hits just right. Those four Chaos Space Marine squads will be taken to the field in two Rhinos. Nothing too fancy here, though with Firing Deck 2, it means those two missile launchers embarked in each Rhino will be able to fire while embarked. Who even needs Razorbacks, am I right? Next we have our stubborn firebase. Two units of Havocs. I've equipped one with chain cannons and one with last cannons, so that they're each dedicated for anti-infantry and anti-armor respectively. Depending on the battlefield needs, you can start one or both in strategic reserves, or swap one or both with one of the legionary squads and protect them in a rhino transport, should that be more suitable for the matchup or mission. Scuttling up to support the legionaries are two venom crawlers. While not the toughest demon engines out there, they are quick skirmishing units with reliable anti-marine ranged and melee weapons. And using their Soul Eater ability, they have the potential to power up, which is always fun. And surging forward with the Venom Crawlers and Rhinos is a Lord Discordant, taken with a Bale Flamer and Magma Cutter. While I loved the role of the Disco Lord as an anti-vehicle scalpel, with 10th edition's vehicle toughness standards increase, unfortunately, the Disco Lord's offensive capacity for vehicles didn't increase in turn. But his abilities still want him to be near enemy vehicles. So, in a stubbornly Iron Warriors move, we're doubling down. He's been given the enhancement Warp Tracer, which allows him to select an enemy unit hit with a shooting attack and deny it cover for the phase. This stacks nicely with his Spirit Thief ability, allowing him to select an enemy unit within 12 inches, the same range as his Bale Flamer, and all of your units can reroll wound rolls of 1 for shooting attacks made against that target. So move this Chain Glaive Scalpel within 12 inches of an enemy vehicle, light it up, and blast away. Next we have the Warlord of this list, a Warp Smith, aiming to serve as our War Smith. What a sentence. You can consider head swapping here for a Mark III Iron Armor Helmet for a more classic aesthetic, 
I personally prefer the older interpretation. The Warpsmith has the usual ability common to many Engineer-type characters, a Command Phase D3 wound recovery for nearby vehicles, which also gives that model a plus one to hit. He's been given the enhancement Ironbound Enmity. It gives all his attacks plus one to wound while on an objective, and while he's not the spiciest bearer for this enhancement, his three ranged weapons and forge weapon will be happy to make use of that perk. Now you could attach him to one of the legionary squads, as they too want to be fighting on objectives, or maybe you'd rather keep him near what's to follow. Serving as our Siege Breaker cohort are a squadron of three Chaos Vindicators. The Vindicator Siege tank has a great aesthetic for the Iron Warriors. It's also tougher than your average Rhino chassis vehicle. Its demo cannon has a solid anti-armor profile, and its ability always allows it to shoot in combat. Next, serving as flexible deep strikers with versatile firing options is not one, but two obliterators. Take it in a unit of two, since that's how they have to be taken now. Ah, uh, yes. To configure units not based on how they would operate in-world, but rather how products are sold. Such fluff. Much wow. The new codex has reduced their focused profile to 18 inches, so you can't deep strike into melter range anymore. So if that's what you'd like to do, you'll have to rapid ingress a turn early. But barring that, obliterators still got the punch. And their warp rift firepower allows them to cheekily fire indirectly once per game. Which, while not as good as a basilisk, will have to suffice for our iron warriors artillery. And last, and most certainly least, is a traitor guardsman unit. They are here to stubbornly sit on your home field objective, or bugger off on some side quest, or throw them to their death to slow down a green tide. They are just mere mortals after all. And that's the list. With current points, it clocks in at 1965, which is a bit low, but that's not counting the cost of the new enhancements, or any other impending points changes related to the Codex. In that regard, it's better to be under rather than over. And if you still need points, you could drop the Traitor Guard unit for a Cultist mob. Overall, I like this list. Really. It's the story of two Warsmiths, represented by the Warpsmith and Lord Discordant. It also includes all the other Iron Warriors thematic units I was hoping to. A trio of Siege Tanks, Havocs and Obliterators, Legionaries with Heavy Weapons, and an obligatory unit of fodder. That's a wrap on this Iron Warriors thematic list build. If you enjoyed this video, there are buttons for liking, sharing, and subscribing. Thanks for watching, and a special thanks to Julius Maximus, as well as my other generous patrons and channel members. Lately, I've been doing hobby live streams, so if chill hobby jams are your thing, join in and let's get those projects done. Anyways, thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.